so I've done quite a few things off camera just because feeling a little bit of pressure for time just for the simple fact I got what would that be 20 days left to finish this project you got a rose and a truck bed back there looking at us anyways um I don't think I got it on camera yet, but that is actually finally tied in. Um, seats aren't bolted in or anything, nor is the center console. These are 03 to 06 TJ seats. Uh, I cleaned them up. I think I paid 200 bucks for them uh, at FN Jeep here in Colorado Springs. If you need parts, go check out what they got. But, uh, yeah. So, I haven't really <laughs> gotten that much done. Uh, off camera, I did. We are going with the Dana 44. Um, I think this is a 87 XJ Dana 44. Um, that I have in here. And I went ahead and cut all the brackets off, the factory brackets. I do have a Comanche Dana 44, but it needs rebuilt, so this one didn't. Um, it's locked, and I went ahead and got the leaf spring perches. Can't really see them, it's kind of dark down there. Got those tacked in, I'm jacking it up pull the rear end out, roll it out, go ahead and finish weld them in, uh, sandblast some parts and pieces, get them back in, get these shocks out, and get the shocks and brake lines hooked up in here, get the rear axle painted, drums on, and then it can go back in. Then it's do the frame stiffeners. I'm just waiting on a new plasma cutter torch head to come in I've made a disaster zone out of the garage again I tried I started to clean up over here anywho uh, so what I'm gonna do is I will show you guys me welding the perches in I went for five degrees Hang on, let me turn that off. I went for five degrees of uh, pinion angle. That's pretty close to pointed at the T-case because this will be running a slip yoke eliminator. Uh, paint's on its way. Diff covers are on their way. I've still got to do the long arms and the whole front axle and even start doing the boat side on this side but i'm kind of waiting until my torch head comes in should be here tuesday or wednesday the sooner the better um i think while we wait on the torch head tomorrow because today is monday tomorrow we will do probably clutch trans t case um, and maybe start getting the front end in this thing. And I also got to go to a tire shop, get the tires dismounted off the wheels and get, I will show you guys how to mount, uh, tires on beadlock wheels. So anyways, this will be the intro to the next video. Uh, the other videos loading right now, I'm a little bit behind, so hopefully we can stay on track here. Um, get the rear bumper and stuff done. Again, I kind of just want to wait till the torch head comes in. Because to cut all this stuff out with the plasma cutter, 10 times easier than sitting here with the, uh, with the angle grinder and the sawzall. So, We'll uh, get back with you guys here in a few minutes when I get this rear axle out of here and y'all can see how I, uh, I mean it's a pretty simple, but see how I do everything. Alright, so 
I've dropped the shackles and the leaf springs, pulled the U-bolts back out. Gonna roll this axle out and then we will finish weld these uh, leaf spring perches in. Then we'll go over to the sandblaster and I will show y'all blasting the, well, screen's kinda dirty. I'll show you the best I can of blasting all the leaf spring brackets, the U-bolt brackets. So, let's get you guys up here. And of course we're hitting the bedside, so that makes this all sorts of fun. Well, I guess that's uh, far enough anyways. I can't actually weld right there, so... Assuming from all the crazy noises. Alright, let's get you guys in right here. This is where the frame is actually built from the ground up. The frame is actually a limit on it as opposed to steel. That makes it 99 pound flagger and about 57% sticker. This is where they all come together. The engine's being installed up to the bottom. Actually, the body's being dropped onto the chassis from above. That's cool. Alright. The headers are on it already. They obviously don't know how to do this right because there's an ATF all over the floor.
destination. Ground zero for Corvette destruction. All right, now we can just do this sign. These are the ones that pulled out. So this thing fell into Middle Earth. It's really not that bad. It's like most of the stuff in my driveway. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, so, they won't be carrying far. So maybe they're partly zoom and this is how this came? Yep. I'm not leaving my parking park here. That one I just put right back in the hole. Yeah. How do we get to the hole, Miss? That way. <laughs> oh, oh, we're going to be That's why we got these. We knew the odds were pretty low that the guys from Corvette Museum would allow us to actually ghost ride our stingray into the hole. But we thought we'd try anyway. I mean, hell, we drove all the way from Florida. How could they tell us no? We have a car we'd like to donate to the museum. You do? But we want to put it directly in the hole. So it can no longer hurt any of mankind, okay? That's done. Now I can wait for this to cool off and then we'll clean it real quick and paint it. Give me a little bit. We'll be back. Alright, so we're back. This is the stuff I use to paint motors, axles, stuff when I'm doing like gloss black. Color lays down, it's super shiny. Bristolian Professionals. I don't know if I have enough to finish this axle, but we'll see how far we get. Okay, 
Where were you on this one? <laughs> that one. All right. <clears throat> I did end up tack welding axle tube and axle tube to diff housing just to keep from them possibly spinning the 488s are known for that if you're ever doing an 88 swap this is pretty much the same process for an 88 swap minus the yoke situation but you definitely want to do that and then we'll let this dry I'll flip it over I'll throw two tack welds up top paint it and it can go back in the truck uh, while we wait on this to dry I'm gonna go sandblast some stuff I tried just checking out with the camera screen you can't see anything in there so I'll just show you guys what they look like before and what they look like after you sandblast them oh. So if you look, this and this don't look too pretty. And so we're going to sandblast these clean. So I will get back with you guys here shortly when I'm done with that. Alright, so not like the cleanest thing in the world but these are the brackets just for one side uh, it took a while to get all the rust off of them but these are going to get painted and then we'll roll the axle back in i highly doubt you can see it from there but it's all nice shiny and painted so we'll get these all painted up i'll sandblast the last two brackets while these dry and we finally can get this thing done, at least the rear axle done for good. Be back in a little bit. Alright, so we're going to put the U-bolts in. You can't really see a whole lot, so I will attempt to do this. With my phone here. How's that air conditioning for you? That doesn't suck. That's for sure. Is it? And probably. That's <laughs> pretty disturbing. Hot dogs. What is that? We had all these obstacles set up, and the goal was not to hit them while we were racing. But I think you know as well as I that these things are not going to survive the day. We didn't want to trash the course right away. We decided the Legacy was probably the safest car to go racing in, so it was up first. All right. As soon as I tried to transfer weight from the rear of the car to the front tires to rotate it around the corner, the fun police kicked in and stopped. The downside is that the car wouldn't slot. The upside is that it was possible to crash this thing into the obstacles, and was probably oh. the best way to navigate the course. And I still beat you because you ran 
This is not a comfortable job. There's a little oh. let's get y'all in here for better look. A little nipple in here. Okay, we're seated in both of them, so now. And I always run. I run these in a star pattern, just like you do on what. One side's in, and just gonna wait on the other side to dry. So we'll be back in a minute. <coughs> All right, we're back. Back at it like a crack at it. Oh shit! And then I still gotta go edit this video. Oh, just so you guys know what mint condition the shocks are like. No effort. Well, a little at the top, but I mean, not doing the shit. sure you drop all your hardware everywhere so you can't find it. It's always good. See on your toes. Yeah. 
If you watched episode 27 of Food Kill, then you know that we met Don Schumacher. And that was way back in, like, oh, April shit. 2014. Well, we're hoping to see Don Schumacher if we met him before that episode, and we're hoping he actually lets us in his shit, because we've played on him at least three times when we promised that we were going to show up. That also, you gotta make sure you do that. It feels really good. Uh, like just strip your hardware out. Crisscross pattern. You gotta make sure. I'll deal with shocks tomorrow. I've got like 20 million and a half options, by the way. Guys, so Comanches have these. Well, you can saw the time, it's 11.18, and I still gotta go edit this. They got this little guy right here that works for the brakes. It's basically a load sensor. It just, uh, they, they suck. I mean, they're terrible. So somebody did the proper procedure here, which is use some house wire to hold it up. We'll leave that because that's mint. All right. Well, I'll catch y'all in the next video tomorrow. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share because I would really like to get somewhere with this. I mean, it's fun, so either way, but yeah, we'll catch you guys tomorrow.